So your session today is about uh, basically cultivating financial resilience in dynamic markets. What are the uh, things you're looking forward to in your session today? See, when we talk of uh, financial resilience, I mean, any CFO, of course, that is his prime job to see that. But if you observe the world last five, six years, things have changed drastically. You know, things are becoming very, very volatile. People are really, we have to be careful in taking all the decisions. You know, it becomes today very, very challenging after COVID and now if you see suddenly the war starts, suddenly rupee depreciates, suddenly rupee appreciates. I mean, those who are in this business. So, unless you are forward thinking, unless you are uh, taking, you have ability to see things. In, I mean, it's very difficult. I agree that it's not easy, but one has to... Uh, absorb the trends which are going in the market what is going on and then take a calculated risk there is no need to jump uh, on the opportunities today and each business will have its own uh, different different strategies to face these kind of challenges like a manufacturing industry will have its own challenge if you are a startup you will have its own challenge now and the word resilient also means different for different people. In the sense, the basic thing concept remains same that your financial res uh, resilience is there. But say in our uh, in the basic concept, like you have to have liquidity, you have to have debt equity, you have proper debt equity. You know, you don't go over leverage. Those are a basic concept which any CFO will follow, and one has to follow that. But beyond that. Beyond that, how do you see the things? How do you strategize the thing? They differentiate between long term and short term. Those things becomes very, very critical in today's environment. So, could you help us understand? Uh, you know, how important do you think it is for leaders to have a forward-thinking approach in managing finances for the future of their businesses? As I said, when I, when, I mean, when I'm saying financial resilience, it covers business resilience also because finance is a part of business, you know. So, one, if really, if you have to take a long-term step and where it is very, very difficult today to uh, foresee the future because things have not changed. If you see today what is happening now, up till now it was a free economy. Now you are suddenly finding the protectionism in the government. People are leaving uh, duties on the exports and people are leaving carbon, uh, leaving carbon tax and these tax and green technology. So these are the new trends emerging. Now all these things makes, uh, unless you are prepared for that, unless you are ready for that, unless your organization, you make the organization future ready. You know, those things are going to stay, but business will not uh, strive for long because and one has to see that, one has to see that, one, uh, how are you neutralizing the carbon, you see? How are you, the supply chain is also becoming a major challenge because suddenly China is out, suddenly China is in, you know. So those things, how to manage those uh, things, that is where uh, we have to focus and we have to have strategies for all such things. Over dependence on world market, over dependence on one supplier are the gone days. I don't think people will follow that. So, in your opinion, what features or what qualities should a leader have uh, to be capable enough to make good financial decisions for their company? This is the same thing I am saying, you know, when you are, I mean, unless you have that analytical mind, unless you are able to see things beyond normal things, okay, okay. it's going to be difficult. Correct, correct, correct. You know, because uh, supposing you are taking a long sum, now if you are not aware, that it can hit you somewhere, like green technology, then a leader must have to have that kind of, uh, I won't say foresight, but that kind of mind and uh, he's, I had used that word agility in past, that he must be able to think something which is others are not able to think. Otherwise, plain, plain vanilla, everybody will think, you know, what are your paybacks and what are these, but what are the detailed thinking behind that? That is where a leader has to uh, come forward and decide. All right, we spoke about the leader, what approach should he or she take. Now let's talk about the organization. How can an organization encourage that sort of an analytical thinking in leaders so that they take those kind of decisions? You must encourage people to participate. Everything, I mean, 
today there are smart people unless you allow them to participate in your discussion you encourage if you see my team now if i'm talking organization if you see my team they are got young people but the ideas and thoughts which they bring sometimes i really really appreciate that yes and this kind of thinking is also required so you have to have a combination of those people you know bring those talent nurture those talent provide them a platform provide them a technology then automatically right. organization will see the results right. Right. Uh, so thank you for this insightful chat uh, great having you here thanks right.